Hello traders, <clears throat> I am Stephen Davis, Senior Market Strategist, RJO Futures, downtown Chicago, Friday, talk to you about the grain markets today, the corn market, we're going to have a beautiful weekend here in Northern Illinois, so corn harvest is going to continue here unabated, next couple of weeks we should be finishing up. Our first 15 billion bushel corn crop, it's big, the demand is big as well, so that's the key here going forward. In a couple minutes time, we're gonna look at a weekly corn chart and all of a sudden corn's been trending a little bit lower here in the last couple of weeks, so we'll talk about that. China, China's so key to all the grain markets and the corn market too. Uh, corn, China's corn policy is changing and it's unpredictable and it's really unknown. We don't know their situation over there in the corn. And with the number of hogs, for example, the number of pigs that they have, it's just unprecedented, this feed demand and, and what their situation is there. So it's important to keep an eye on this. Um, we got a crop report on Wednesday, so that'll be important. And certainly Tuesday's election will have ramifications for all of markets. Uh, Mexico, for example, has been buying a gigantic amount of U.S. soybeans here in past weeks. Uh, perhaps if uh, Hillary wins the presidency, Mexico won't have to buy U.S. corn for a while. Their stockpiling has been increasing here, a lot of U.S. corn. Back to China. China's food policy, food safety and food security is paramount in China. The history of that country in the last 50, 100 years, the population of China, they starved. They went through some starvation periods. The government over there is never going to let this happen again, hence the stockpiling of U.S. soybeans and U.S. corn. Okay, the soybean market, good story here, good demand story, um, very good exports yesterday in soybeans and corn. Last week we had 105 million metric tons of soybeans for inspection. That's the second largest ever. So we're hitting some of these numbers that we've never seen before. So this demand story continues very strong. Soybeans, the exports to China have been on a very strong pace. A lot of analysts think this, this demand is going to be met here and there's going to be a yang to the yin that we're seeing here for Chinese demand. I don't believe that. I think it's going to be constant here, Chinese purchases of U.S. soybean. The rest of the world is the key in my analysis of soybean demand. Morocco bought U.S. soybeans this week. Pakistan bought U.S. soybeans this week. South Korea. Uh, Japan, a big grain buyer. So it's important the rest of the world in here continue to buy U.S. grain. Soybeans, they need this export fix on a daily basis. We didn't get any in a daily announcements this morning of U.S. soy. Yesterday we had uh, 430,000 tons of U.S. corn to Mexico, 120,000 tons of U.S. soybean to unknown, and 144,000 tons of U.S. soybean to, to China. So we need this pace to continue, and I think it will. Uh, our first chart today, weekly chart of corn, three weeks of lower highs and lower lows have been trending lower here. Crude oil's been weak, so maybe that's why corn and soybeans have sold off here recently. And then the next chart, the weekly chart of soybeans, notice the support on the weekly soy chart here going forward. Everybody have an excellent weekend.